Welcome to Griffin's Gaming Guides. In this video, I'm going to show you where you can acquire every single melee weapon on Narood in Remnant 2. Now, Narood is a futuristic alien landscape fraught with dangers, including mechs, fog, which makes you sick just by being near it, overgrown slugs, and hard hitting wraiths. Fortunately, there are five pretty decent melee weapons you can acquire in Narood, with two of them being next level. Now, melee weapons are a lot more useful in Remnant 2 than they may first appear, with many favouring guns over blades. However, when you have an enemy up close or you need to reload or have simply run out of ammunition, a decent melee weapon can be incredibly helpful to carve and smash your way through enemies, allowing you time to reload, scavenge ammo and compose yourself before moving forward in this very tough game. So in this video, I'm going to give you a look at how to acquire all five melee weapons in Narood. I'm also going to give you a look at what they do. If you do need their complete guides, you can find a link for that down below the like button, as well as a link over to the website detailing where you can get all five melee weapons or stick with us where we give you a good look at what they do as well. So then let's get into it with the Atom Smasher, which can be acquired on the Rood in Terminus Station, which is a randomly occurring biome, as most of them are, in this procedurally generated hellscape. Now, the requirements to get the Atom Smasher, you simply need to survive the train journey before the time runs out and then follow a hidden path. So once you're in the Terminus Station biome, which like I say, is randomly generated, you then need to go onto the train where the conductor will give you a good few minutes to take down every single mech. You're gonna have roughly six minutes to clear every single enemy, including the special at the end. Once you've done so, the train conductor won't kill you, which is nice of him. So once you're off the train, follow the linear path around to the mini checkpoint, rest and then turn around looking back towards the train. You can then take a left through the path ducking underneath the cables where you're going to come to a ladder, allowing you to follow another path around, jump down on top of the train, go through the open hatch and then collect the Atom Smasher melee weapon. Now the Atom Smasher for me, it's kind of a middle of the road weapon to be fair. Its ability essentially makes the attacks a little bit faster once you've done a charged attack but it's only 10% faster, so it's not the best of weapons that you can acquire on the road. However, if you do find Terminus Station on your first run, then the Atom Smasher will definitely take down enemies a lot better than one of your potential starting weapons will. Next up, we've got the Atom Splitter, which is a fantastic weapon. It's one of my favorite melee weapons in the entire game. Now you can find this thing on the road in the Vault of the Formless Biome. What you need to do is progress through the Vault of the Formless Biome. You will come to a section of the beaten track where there are claws moving a giant contraption filled with pods. The claws will, on occasion, pull a section of pods out and raise it up to the ceiling. You need to jump onto the platform when it's pulled out and then quickly jump across to your right to a broken walkway before the platform you're on goes too high where you're going to die. Now once you've made both jumps, go into the room, drop down and then collect the Atom Splitter which will be against the back wall. Now what makes the Atom Splitter so powerful, apart from the Final Fantasy vibes it gives you when you're wielding this thing, is its baked in ability called Fission Strike, where on neutral evade attacks, Atom Splitter achieves nuclear fission, releases a wave of charged particles, which deal 160.5 damage to targets within 20 meters. It essentially sends a bloody great wave of energy forward, a good amount, taking out every enemy in its path, providing they're weak enough or you're powerful enough. This is definitely a weapon that I recommend that you pump some resources into, as even just its normal attacks at level 1 are overpowered. At level 10, this thing just annihilates the competition.
Next up, we're going to have a look at the gas giant melee weapon, which you can craft over at Macabre in Ward 13 once you've taken down Tol Ratha Metaphysical, which is a different version to the normal Tol Ratha. You can access by choosing to join Eternity. Once you've taken him down, you're then going to get the Acidic Jawbone. Take that over to Macabre in Ward 13, along with 5 Luminite Crystal and 1,000 Scrap. You can then craft the very strong Acidic-based gas giant melee weapon. Now the gas giant is very useful against anything weak to acid such as the mechs that you can find, the specials or maybe even the zombies and bugs. Essentially, if it doesn't like acid, this is going to be the weapon for you as it's baked an ability called Dying Breath. When infused, neutral backdash charged attacks explode in a 3 meter AOE and leaves an acid cloud which lasts for 15 seconds, dealing damage over time. When I put the guard up originally, I wasn't very complimentary about the gas giant. However, having played with it a little bit more, it does actually have a lot more potential than what I give it credit for, which is another reason why we're putting these kind of compilation videos up, just so that way, if I have changed my opinion, I can do it here, and I have. This is definitely a weapon that if you manage to get hold of it by taking down Tower Wrath the Metaphysical, you need to go off and level it up a few times, especially if that guy was the first world boss that you've defeated, as the potential of this thing is fairly good, to be fair. Next up, we'll have a look at the very, very powerful Spectral Blade melee weapon, which you can acquire once you've taken down Shahala, Spectral Guardian of Narud, by gaining the Eidolon Shard using the left side of the terminal. Don't use the override pin before you go in and take on Shahala. Just take him down with the left side of the console. You're then going to, like I say, get the Eidolon Shard. You can take over to Macabre in Ward 13, along with 7 Luminite Crystal and 1,000 Scrap, and then craft the incredibly useful Spectral Blade. Now what makes the Spectral Blade such a useful weapon is it's baked an ability called Whirlwind, where performing a charged melee attack during a neutral back dash creates a whirlwind of slashes which strike all enemies within 8 meters for 333.1 damage. Can't forget the point one. Now what that essentially means is, if you've got a group of low level enemies that have surrounded you on say Nerud or Lassom or even Yasha to a point sometimes in places like the Faithless Thicket with those little kind of rolling little bastards that always seem to put you down to the checkpoint, just do a quick back step, hold down the attack button, everything around you is dead. And if they're not dead, they'll be very, very close to it. The whirlwind attack on the Spectral Blade has to be seen to be believed. It's an incredible weapon. I can't recommend highly enough. Get yourself on it and get it leveled up. It will save your life. Next up we have the Vice Grips, which are essentially a set of claws you can craft at the Drizzia Replicator from the Ascension Spire checkpoint, just underneath where the Custodian lives. You need to basically drop down in the hole to the floor to the left. You've got to find the Drizzia Replicator, go up to it so long as you've got 10 Luminite Crystal, 15 Relic Dust, which can be found in most chests, and a thousand scrap. You're then going to be able to craft a fairly decent pair of claws. 
Now, the vice grips don't have any baked in abilities. However, considering how easy these things are to get a hold of, I don't expect to have a baked in ability. You can slap a mutator on, and that'll pretty much be good enough for you. It does a very nice back step where it does like a one two punch with the claws, as well as slashing around. You can essentially turn yourself into a nice little mini Wolverine. You just don't get the healing alongside it. <laughs> So that's a look at how you can acquire all five melee weapons on the rude. Which ones have you already got? Are you not going after any of them? Are you sick and tired of the rude and just can't be bothered with the world anymore? Or are you going after every single one? Or are you just here to make your own guides? If you are, I want to shout out in your video. But of course, whichever melee weapons you go after and what ones you use is your choice, as is whether or not you feel like subscribing to Griffin's Gaming Guides, which I would very much appreciate. Either way, though, whichever you decide to do, please take care of yourselves out there, enjoy the rest of your week, and I do look forward to seeing you back here at Griffin's Gaming Guides.